Hi there, welcome to the Napa Valley Museum. I'm very pleased to be presenting Shauna Wagner from the Napa County Office of Education. Shauna, what are we doing here today? We are here today for the Napa County 5th Grade Science Fair 2011 and we're very excited to be hosting a number of 5th graders from around the county who have competed at their school level in science fairs and are now here to represent their schools and with their fabulous projects and show them off to the community. I suppose my question to you is why is science important? Why are we even doing this and, and why is the, the county involving themselves in all the hours that you've put into this program? It's the third year, right? Yes, this is our third year, and we absolutely believe at the County Office of Education that uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, which is called STEM, which is a major initiative that the federal government has undertaken, is uh, the direction that education is heading and what we really need to be putting our focus into. And that's why we want to encourage um, this understanding of s complex science projects in, at this grade level. So what are your outcomes for today? In other words, um, we're going to do this. This is just the, the third year. What can we hope for the next couple of years with this project? Well, we certainly hope to see more schools involved. Every year we've had a few more schools join us. And we've this year is the first year we're having it here at the lovely Napa Valley Museum. And we really like this to be a community event. We hope that younger and older students will come out, support these fifth graders with their projects, enjoy the hands-on activities that we have, and cheer when we give out the prizes at the end of the day, and really just come to make this a great community event. Great. Well, thank you so much. Now, if you're ready, let's go around and look at some of the science experiments. Okay, we have two incredible scientists from NBLA, that's the Napa Valley Language Academy, and they're going to be explaining their science project. Um, our project is about the um, oil spill, and um, we want to know which absorbent could, um, could absorb the most oily li liquid to help the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, the data shows that the sock with the sawdust absorbent absorbed the most liquid. We noticed that this method is great at figuring out what, what was the best way to collect the oil. Fantastic. Now, did you have fun doing this project? Yes. So we're here with the staff and the committee of the science fair and I'd like to start off with Shauna Wagner who is the curriculum coordinator for the Office County of Education for Napa County. Um, Shauna, can you tell us why you're doing this and about your commitment and how this started? The, at the Napa County Office of Education we uh, really believe in the importance of science education and so when uh, we were approached by some members of the community, you being one of them, about wanting to start a countywide science fair, we were really eager to get involved. And so maybe Hugh can talk about how that all happened. Uh, I'm Hugh Lynn. I'm the president of Riker Spence and Associates, and I'm also a member of the Napa Sunrise Rotary. Um, several of our members um, were grammar school students at uh, high school or at grammar schools at Na in the Napa Valley Unified School District, and had won science fairs when they were children. And they approached me and said, "This science fair is no longer active. We think you would be a good candidate for uh, revigorating it." And as a as a engineer. Um, I have a passion for science and I, I think it's an important part of our um, requirements to teach our kids to be inquisitive. So um, I took the initiative and we did what was necessary to connect the right people to put on the science fair. Um, I'm Alex Rydell. I'm the CTO of Sapien Technologies um, here in Napa. And my son was actually participating in the first science fair that we had. And I realized that the prizes that were handed out at the science fair were not really motivating 
for you know the children who participated and I thought that some of the really cool projects deserved a little bit more reward for all the hard work that goes into it and as a scientist myself and as an electrical engineer I thought you know sponsoring kids doing that doing science you know getting into this is a really important thing so you know for the second year now Sapien sponsors the prizes or most of them for the fair thank you And now we have a brilliant scientist from the Napa Valley Language Academy. Um, could you please introduce yourself and tell us what your project is? Uh, my name is Maggie Carpenter, and for my science project, I did Do Plants Grow Faster with Chicken Manure. Um, so first I planted two sets of plants, one with beans and one with melons. And um, the first two sets, or the first two pots, were used with um, chicken manure, all chicken manure. And then the second ones were with 100% soil. And then the last ones were both of them mixed up together. And I waited to see which one grew um, faster and taller. Um, and so my results was that um, the mixture grew faster because in the chicken manure, um, it's too strong for the plants because it has too much um, hydrogen, I think, in it. Yeah. Um, so that's what I did for my science project. <laughs> You ever see Jason? You broke it. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of different parts. Wow, try it again. Probably done that too. <laughs> What are you doing? She's trying to crack that rock. She's like, it's really big. This is power. You guys have to. Can you hear me? Are your safety glasses on? I don't even know what she's talking about. You can go down there. One big one. Ding, 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 ding. Give me my five and go crap over for the Gio. Good job. Starting yeah. I know there's a River And now we have a scientist from the Browns Valley Elementary School. Could you please introduce yourself and tell us about your project? My name is uh, Zachary Matern, and for my project, I did what we could use on a kitchen sponge after it's used we rubbed it on the dishes and we washed the dishes and um, we made sure that uh, they didn't have any on them when we took them out of the package which was the control and then we washed them through the dishwasher and made sure that that didn't kill them all but it killed some of them and it made them grow rapidly and then they died and then more grew and then they died and then it stopped growing because they ran out of food. And then um, my conclusion is that the control sponges would have some from the factory when they were being put together and packaged. And they were moist, but they didn't have any on them throughout the whole three weeks we did it. And then for the one weeks, they grew some at a quick pace and then we washed them and they grew and then they died and then they grew and then they died and then we did for two weeks and the two weeks grew a lot faster than the one weeks and then the two week wash were the worst because they just kept growing and dying growing and dying so that was kind of fun to see how you could do a sponge and to see which way was the best to wash your sponge and how to keep it clean. So that was pretty fun. That's awesome. Have you thought about what you want to do when maybe you grow up? 
Um, not entirely. I really like reading and I like science, so I don't know. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. I wanted to thank you for sending that information to me. That, uh, that, uh, well, uh, what about life? Is, uh, I mean, life is a factor. I'm here with Dr. Barbara Nemco, County Superintendent of Schools, and Dr. Nemco, why did the county office decide to get involved in the uh, county-wide science fair? Because we are the natural entity to coordinate something for the whole county, and because science education has taken a back seat in this era of accountability, with all the focus on reading and math, a lot of classes aren't doing much science anymore. And having a science fair is a way of getting kids excited about science. We've just talked to a couple of parents today who say it's been transformational for their children because suddenly they are excited about science. They are asking questions. They want to know how does this work and why does it work. These are our future scientists and this is a great way of motivating them. From El Centro Elementary School, welcome. Well, my name is Ali Solorio and I'm from El Centro and I did a color changing milk science experiment because I thought it was really cool that you can mix dye and milk and it will explode with color like that. And um, I thought that the milk, the full fat milk will work better and it actually did and um, the 2% and the fat free didn't work as well as the whole milk and I just did an extra test with the water and the dye just sunk all the way to the bottom. And my hypothesis was correct because the fat in the milk and the soap molecules are trying to mix and that's what you see right here and it's trying to like it's kind of like chasing the fat to connect with it and that's what I did for my science experiment. You're incredible. What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I kind of want to be a scientist now because it's really cool. A chemist. from the Napa Valley Language Academy, and they're going to be explaining their project. Could you start by stating your name, please? Um, my name is Manuel. Hello. Hi, my name is Garrett. Great, well, tell us what's going on. Um, our project is called Mummified Fish. Um, this explains the mummification rate of a fish and how different um, salt solutions affect the mummification rate of the fish. Our conclusion was um, fish number four was the most mummified um, with the one cup um, laundry booster and the one cup salt um, because um, the laundry booster had more um, absorbent uh, type of chemicals than the, um, uh, than the baking soda. And now we have a scientist from the Browns Valley Elementary School. Um, I'd like you to introduce yourself and tell us about your project. I'm Megan, from, and my project is the effect of antibacterial pro products on germs. And my conclusion was found that the hand sanitizer grew the most than actually just the saliva. So I kind of thought that it either fed the germs or it didn't have their full effect because I didn't rub the chopstick. But the antibacterial soap for two minutes had about the same amount of growth as the regular soap for 30 seconds from Yauntville Elementary School. Welcome, I was wondering if you could introduce yourself and tell us about your project, please. Hi, my name's Audrey and uh, my project is like, 
Hide and seek with magnet and iron. Uh, my question is, can a magnet detect iron in an iron pill? Well, um... Was the iron, was the magnet able to detect the iron in an iron pill? Uh, you have to, like, put it in the tablet in, like, water and, like, crush it up before it attracts it. Because, like, there's powder in there that hides the iron, so it can't really attract it unless you put water in it. <laughs> He's gonna be on TV. This from Northward Elementary School, and I was wondering if you could introduce yourself, please, and tell us a little bit about your science experiment. I'm Sage Gregory. And I'm Cassidy Merrick. Um, the project that we did was we um, put vegetables and cookies because we both like cooking and we wanted to find out a way to make cooking a science fair project. And what we did was we um, picked a, cho a chocolate chip co cookie recipe and then we picked five different types of vegetables and we made all the cookies. and. Um, changing only the type of vegetable? Um, our conc uh, we had 10 students from our classroom um, survey our, fi our five different kinds of cookies and zucchini came out uh, was as the best cookie with cauliflower and carrot um, cauliflower in second place and carrot in third. from El Centro Elementary School. And uh, sir, can you introduce yourself please and tell us about your project? Hi, my name is Devin. My project is about yeast. The hypothesis says when you, when water warmed to 110 degrees with yeast and sugar added will produce more carbon dioxide than the plain, plain water. With yeast juice and with yeast, or coke with yeast added. What do you want to be when you grow up? A scientist. how much shows how much energy it's producing. This one actually produces And now we have another brilliant scientist from El Centro Elementary School. Sir. Hi, my name is Healy C. Soto, and here I have hot eyes, which is a chemical reaction. It's it's not actually hot. It's not actually, people think it's hot ice, but it's actually not. It's actually sodium acetate. Sodium acetate, you can buy it, but it's like really expensive. So another way I found out how to make it is by using these utensils. And the utensils I used were 70% rubbing alcohol, baking soda, aluminum foil, a big pan, measuring utensils, and a plastic plate. So then I was excited when I saw so it transformed and everything. I got really excited when I touched it. And that's my story of hot ice. That is amazing. Now, one more quick question. What do you want to do when you grow up? I'd be a scientist or a doctor. I'll be either. It's from the Napa Valley Language Academy. He's going to be explaining his experiment. I'm Matthew and my question is, are edible plants that grow in Giardia contaminated water safe to eat? And our conclusion is that there is only Giardia on the outside, not on the inside, because it's too big. Even though you have to magnify it thousands of times to be able to see it, it is still too big to fit into the plant. We found out that there is no way to truly get rid of it. We just have to watch it lots of times, and that dilutes the plant the chance of getting it. In doing so, we have decided that our family is going to eat it after washing it many times, but 
I cannot say that that's perfectly safe. What, these are our judges right here. Dean Wagner is a science teacher at Vintage High School. Luann Talbert is a science teacher at River. And I'm a Alex Rydell is um, the owner of Sapien Technologies, a software company here in town. And so you'll see them coming around, so you don't have to worry if there's other adults or not actually officially your judge. These are the three judges. And they will want to talk to you about your project and ask you some questions. Once you have met with a judge, then you are welcome to go exploring. There's geode cracking over there. There's the um, Vintage High School Sustainable Task Force is doing some great uh, solar cars. And then there's lots of hands-on activities over here. Ben and Jerry's is selling ice cream. We're supposed to have a taco truck. He's not here yet. Hopefully he's going to show up if you get hungry later. Huh. And there are some snacks over here. Um, but like I said, you'll want to stay near your project until you've been officially judged. And then once your score sheet is gone, then feel free to roam around and have a good time. Okay? Then just uh, grab one of us if you have any questions. So what, it only works so that's the how, how does that factor into That's it just, together. but it, if you put the magnet now, on the sensor, you can see that the sensor, sensor turns on and off. Mm -hmm. What we're going to try to do was to rig it so that the all effect sensor. So the smaller the object, the closer you have to do this, and then you see the hot ice. As we did, we work to study how we get a ball and it's not actually hot. You need a drink. There's a spot for this. Amount of time, flip it, and then pull it out, let it dry really fast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 So and that was yeah that was probably the best project that I had, uh, but it was by with two girls and they presented it very well. I mean they had it all just. Uh, so we have two girls, right? Mm-hmm. And, and you have two, you know, two German people basically <laughs> that that you would qualify for first place. Yeah. What about I, you? Now? I don't have anybody else where oh, I would go. Okay. This is your first place project. And I had another one. I Kelly. So this is the Napa County 5th grade science fair and we are really excited. I'm going to say the name of your school, I think I'll get all the schools right, and let me know which school you're with. We have some NVLA here, Napa Valley Language Academy, and we have Browns Valley, and Alta Heights, Yonville, do we have a Yonville project? And, wait, who am I forgetting? El Centro. El Centro, thank you. Northwood, thank you. Yeah, now that I think is everybody. Okay, should have brought my list up with me. Okay, so we'd like to once again thank and introduce our judges. We have Alex Rydell from Sapien Technologies, <laughs> Dean Wagner from Vintage High School, and Luann Talbert from River School, and Dr. Barbara Nemco is the County Superintendent of Schools, and she's going to be our awards mistress this afternoon, helping us present the awards. <laughs> so we first of all just want to say congratulations. Just taking the time to do your project is really great, and a lot of kids have the opportunity and choose not to, and the fact that you guys took the time to do this, we really are excited that you did that. And so everyone's going to walk away with a prize, which is wonderful, and we have to thank Sapien Technologies for purchasing all the prizes today. <laughs> I just want to congratulate you because I think what's the most important thing that happens in the science fair 
is that you don't focus so much on getting the right answer, you focus on asking the right question. And that's probably the most important thing that you can do to help you learn. And some of the questions that you asked were really important questions. I will never look at vinegar and baking soda the same way again. And you rocked my world with the sponge, the revelations about what happens with sponges, because all these years I've been assuming that popping those little babies into the dishwasher made them just fine and bacteria free. And so I suspect there's going to be a run on sponges in Napa County markets today. I'll be buying a lot and tossing them out on a regular basis. So thank you for thinking about these things, asking the questions, testing your hypotheses, and finding out that this is how we advance knowledge. You're doing a wonderful job, and I hope you will continue the curiosity and tell your friends if they've been as curious as you, they might have gone home with one of these fabulous prizes. Thanks to the parents, too, for helping your kids with all this, because I know somehow you had an involvement. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do today is uh, there's going to be a participation prize, which is we have these rocket race cars, and we also have hovercrafts, so someone will be getting one of those. And then our second place prizes will get one of these great science kits. We have global warming, physics, electronics. First place gets, I know you've all been eyeballing them, the telescope, which is really cool. And we have a grand prize that will go home with a Kindle and a $50 gift card for getting their first books on their Kindle. So, and here we go. So we're going to start with the participation prizes. Okay, Ali Solorio. Come on up when we call your name. And Luis Rodriguez. Chloe Jones. Alvaro Lopez. Daniel Rodriguez. Samuel Morales. Maya Paco. Maya, are you here? Am I saying it right? Okay. She's not here. Okay. Maggie Carpenter. Garrett Lustig. Manuel Lopez. Devin Holst Pendergrass. Ulysses Soto. Audrey Lee, congratulations to our participation prize winners. Okay, and now we have four second place projects. Caitlin, badness. Oh, and her project was Water Absorption Experiment. And then pick one of pick one of these. Okay, and the next second place winner is Delaney Malai with Shiny Penny. And next we have Matthew Vandenberg. Edible plants in natural creeks live or die.
Jill Perriott, do girls have more taste buds than boys? Morgan Guillamo, which soda has the least carbon dioxide? And now we have a team, Sage Gregory and Cassidy Merrick, vegetable cookies. Okay, moving on to first place. Each of these winners will receive the Astro Master Telescope. This first one is a team, Brie Cavalli and Dulce. Congratulations, girls. And our next first place winner, Megan Morrison, the effects of antibacterial products on germs. Zachary Matern. Does bacteria grow in a kitchen sponge? And finally, our grand prize winner for the Kindle and gift card. Oh, we don't have a last name, but we have Megan with Jello Optics. Oh, wow. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you for coming.